Hey folks, Mike McGee here. In today's video, we're gonna take a wild hog, a small wild hog, and we're gonna smoke it in hot smoke inside this smoker. Now, a lot of people get confused about the smokehouse and think that I'm cooking meat in there. Not the case, I'm preserving meat. I'm curing meat with salt, and then I smoke it with cold smoke to preserve it. That's not what we're doing here. This is called cook and eat. We're gonna get in here and do this. We got friends coming to eat. We're gonna cook it up with hickory wood. Let's do it. going pretty good here's my pig still got a little bit of ice hanging on it here and there but it's thawed nicely and still cold as you can see there's still ice hanging on so I'm not going to salt this thing down or put any seasonings on it for now we're just going to put it in there because as you know when you salt meat it pulls out that moisture and I have made a huge point of not losing moisture on a lean animal like this. Obviously the most skeptical wild hog person would understand this is a very small one. The smaller, the better as far as tenderness, any kind of wild taste, not there. In my opinion, the best tasting ones are the big old sows, the big females, they got a lot of flavor and more fat. But this little guy's gonna fit the bill perfectly today. He's gonna cook fairly quickly. He's going to literally be just tender, fall off the bone tender if I do it right. And if you stick with me in this video, you'll see how to do it right. Let's do it. We're gonna let this hickory wood continue to catch and to get that fire embedded in the wood before we shut it down because not only do we want some smoke effect, but we gotta have heat. This is not cold smoke, this is heat. All right, we checked this baby, and it is hot all the way down. So we're gonna shut it, shut it all the way down. Just like this, and just like this. And I can even go a step further. I can take this forward and lay it right over there. That will shut her down and make her stay right there. Let's take a peek inside. That's a beautiful sight. All right, we're gonna pull this pig out, flip it over. I got me some heat gloves here, but I don't recommend them. They're made, if you got webbed fingers, they might work. They just can't hardly grab anything with them. If you know a good brand that, that really works, you can hardly make a fist with these rascals. Let me know in the comment section. I'd like to get some good ones. So we've got him turned over. I'm going to let this ride for a while longer. And I'm going to take this off and let the heat build a little more. And then we're going to take an internal temperature. And we're going to wrap him up. All right. I believe it's time to take this baby out. It's starting to get some nice char look to it. We're gonna lay it over here. We're gonna wrap it up. Boy, there is just moisture. This is still a very moist pig, even though a lot has come out. There is a lot of moisture here. I'm looking forward to actually getting this thing wrapped up and getting it tender. Right now, you probably couldn't put a fork in the gravy. All right. As you see, I've got plenty of foil already laid out here. Let's take that temp real quick. Inside the ham here. It's 115. Shoulder, 129. 120, let's see here. It's going down right there in that thick part of the shoulder. It's 86, so 
Needless to say, we want to get the internal temperature somewhere around 160, something like that. The thing that can get you with wild pork is the trichnosis, which it dies instantly at 140. It can't live beyond that. So no problem once we hit 140. And a little pig like here, more than likely, he never got into anything that had trichnosis in it anyway. But, you know, you've always got that in the back of your mind. So always take your wild pork to at least 140, but I always go on to 160. I was recently given some Redmond's Real Salt because it's got so much more nutrition. Well, it's full of minerals and that's good for the body. And I'm on a pretty good health kick right now. So I'm going to... I'm going to be laying it on it. Now when this salt pulls the moisture out, it's literally going to be trapped in this wrap and it will go back into the meat when we rest it. And that's the whole point. Camp Dog Cajun seasoning is absolutely where it's at. The people that I've got coming today actually love it. so. I'm going to lay it on pretty heavy, pretty heavy. You're dealing with a pretty good sized chunk of meat here. Even though he's a small pig, he's got some fairly decent sized pieces. So now we're just gonna wrap this Bertha up and get him back in that, get him back in that smoker. The trick is to not lose your moisture, so you don't want to punch holes in it. You want this wrapped up. It can be tricky. You've got all these phalanges and things poking out, but just take your time. You want a pocket. Make a pocket out of it. And you want to stop this charring, and you want to begin the slow cook. All right, let's throw this back in there. Get the smoke rolling again. If you want to get you some of that camp dog seasoning and see what the fuss is all about, just go to the descriptions of this video and you can get you some for 20% off. I don't know how many people have said they loved it. I haven't had anybody say they didn't love it. All right, it's time for us to get in here and check this temperature. I want to check this ham in the back. It's, that's my most important focus right now. There's a the little hammy ham. Plunger down in there. 152, we're rolling about 152, so I want to let it go a little longer, we'll wrap it up, and close her back down, I'm going to let the, hang, the heat crank up a little bit, pull this off, open this a little bit, Plenty of wood. I could smoke all day with that right there. All right, it's been another 30 minutes and we got the heat rolling in here. Let's just check it out and see what we got. Ha. 166. One sixty-seven, one sixty-six, one sixty-eight. Time to do the victory dance because. We're going to get this thing and rest it just a minute. And after we rest it a little bit, it's going to be time to eat. Let's do it. All right, guys, it's time to start tearing in this thing. I believe we've got fairly tender shoulders and bellies and ribs. We're going to throw it back in the cook into the smoker and cook it a little while longer after we get it parted up. All right, I'm going to take these, dump them out here, just do the old chop chop. When you got a lot of hungry boys, you don't want to take forever. And this right here is getting it done. It does look great. And it does smell great. It's just going to have to cook some more for the thicker portions. Go ahead and just take it. Take some. Pass it down. Don't dump it out. All right. Everybody try it and see what you think. You want to try a little piece of neck meat?
That's juicy. That is really good. Mary, pass your plate. I'm give you something a little better. I think it's tenderer than the rib. Yeah. The juice is just flowing out of it. Absolutely. <laughs> Delicious. Dave has a plate on put juicy meat on the brain. Caleb don't want no juicy meat. treat mama good. Mama has put up with daddy all these years. We gotta treat mama really nice. All right, folks, there you have it. A lot of people think wild pork has just got a terrible flavor. This right here has absolutely nothing but goodness. Juicy dripping goodness. Mm. It's really, really good. You like that? So, we're looking forward to having some company come. If you stay tuned for the next video, tomorrow, we're going to have some company here. A lot of you know them already. They are YouTubers. They have a channel. They'll be here eating. They'll be eating some of this, but we're going to make them some mangalitsa pork chops from that prime mangalitsa pork. But for now, that's all we got for you. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.